calls you by name. We need to understand God's perspective. God wants us to be prosperous. The word shalom. Somebody say shalom. shalom. Turn around and bless somebody. Say, I bless you. Shalom. Shalom. The word shalom, we, you know, as, as, as Gentiles, as non-Jewish people, we don't understand what the word shalom means. We just know it's the way that Jewish people bless each other. The word shalom means, I pray above all things that you prosper financially, that you're healthy, and that you grow spiritually. That's what the word shalom means. When John said in 3 John 2, he said, Beloved, I pray above all things. Above all things. I can't begin to really get across what God has been speaking to me. He says, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be healthy at the rate that your soul prospers. If you prosper financially and if you're healthy and your soul is in the pits, it does you no good. What good is, is it for you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Your soul has to prosper. God's will is for you to prosper in your soul first. He mentions money first and wealth first. He mentions health second. He mentions the soul third. But you have to understand the Hebrew way of thinking. It's almost always backwards. It's almost always they tell you one thing and then they back it up with something else. Or they say a few things to make a point about something. Even in the book of Genesis, you read chapter 1, then you read chapter 2. And you see that chapter 1 says certain things and chapter 2 then explains those things. They even read backwards. It's different. So when he says, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health, what I'm really trying to say is, God wants you to grow spiritually. And when you do, all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. 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 Jesus said, do not seek after riches and wealth like the Gentiles do. He said, your father knows you need these things. Therefore, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given unto you. Amen. Don't seek money. Don't seek wealth. Don't seek riches. It will be given unto you as you seek the kingdom. And that's what John is saying. I pray above all things that you may grow spiritually, because if you do, God will give you everything you need for life and godliness. That's the way Peter said it. God has a purpose in prosperity. He has a reason for us to be prosperous. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 19 says this, Don't store up treasures here on earth. Is it okay to have a 401k? Yes, that's okay. Is it okay to have a savings account? Yes, that's okay. Is it okay to buy a piece of property as an investment? Yes, that's okay. But don't let that be your treasure. That's simply your investment. Your treasure must be in heaven. The purpose of having a 401k is so that when you're older and you're not working, you have enough and some to spare. King Solomon, the wisest king, the wisest man, said, Lord, don't give me riches. Give me enough and some to spare. And God gave him everything. <clears throat> if we understood the purpose of prosperity, we would begin to prosper. Some of you are getting it. See, Angela hit something so strong before in her testimony. I was not looking for it. I was not expecting it. I saw no room for advancement. I saw nothing. But you know what she did see? She saw Jesus. Amen. She saw her duty as a Christian employee. Her job as a Christian employee was to do the best she could do as unto the Lord. Your boss may be the crankiest, stinkiest, rottenest person in the world, but you have to serve your boss as if your boss was Jesus. And that's how you seek the kingdom. You do everything you can with your whole heart 
unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Some of you are stinky bosses. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Most of the time you do nothing but complain and murmur. And pray the guy out. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. that person. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty Get rid of them. And the Lord's saying, I can't prosper you because you got a bad attitude. That stinky person is a future Christian. If you will walk right, if you will display me openly, how? You don't have to be preaching to everybody. You don't have to keep five Bibles on your desk. All you have to do is live the life of love Amen. and serve. And when the right opportunity comes, you let them know why you're doing it. Yeah. Back in the days of pay phones, I was making a phone call. I got interrupted by the operator. She said, you have to put 10 more cents in, please, for the next three minutes. I said, you know what, operator? I'm going to do something. Yes. I'm going to give you that 10 cents. Yes. Do you know why I'm going to give you that 10 cents? No. She's getting aggravated. Because <laughs> I'm keeping her on the line. And I said, a few years ago, I became a born-again Christian. You see, before that, I'd have laughed at your face. I wouldn't have put 10 cents in for nothing. But I'm going to put that 10 cents in now because Jesus changed my life. And I just witnessed to her. Now, did it make a difference in her life? Yes. Did it change her? I don't know. But it certainly gave her an opportunity to think. You need to give people the opportunity to think about Jesus on the job. When you do that, you're seeking the kingdom. You're seeking the kingdom. we got to stop super spiritualizing everything. When I went to work and I decreed and I declared five things today, praise God, I was seeking the kingdom. Now you're just blowing your mouth off. You're just showing how much you know the word and you're just showing how you're up with the latest thing in the church, decreeing and declaring. It used to be, it used to be believe it and receive it, now it's decreed and declare it. These things are like things that go around in cycles. You need, to, you need to have more to your Christianity than a cycle. You need to have some substance. Now, faith is the substance. It's a reality. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to pray that I start preaching a little quicker because at this rate, we're never going to get out of here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, we have to get this we have to get this in our minds, in our hearts, and our souls. He says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. What does he mean? He's saying, you can have an abundant life. You don't have to be a Christian to have abundance in life. But what he's saying is, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly than you could ever get on your own. We need to let this sink in. Jesus wants me to prosper and have an abundance of life more than I can ever get on my own. So I've got to stop seeking for those things and I've got to seek his kingdom. I've got to seek his will. Because when I seek his will, then the prayer of John the Apostle will come to pass. As my soul is prospering, my, 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 my health and my finances, my wealth, will come around where God wants it to be. Amen. David said, I've, I've been up and I've been down, but I've never seen the righteous begging bread. You see, when you're righteous, when you're walking with God, you never have to beg. You talk to the Lord, you let your needs be known, and God will make a way where there is no way. He will open up a door when you never expected a door to open. Somebody will come up to you and do something and be a blessing to you. There were people in Walmart last week. They put things on wet layaway. They found out an hour later that everything they put away was paid for. Somebody went in there and, and said, I'm going to pay every single layaway bill. And they said, it's probably over $10,000. But the person didn't care. They wanted to give Christmas gifts to people. We need to start to see God is going to move in ways that we don't expect. Mm -hmm. Because we believe he wants us to be number one. He says, I want you to be the head and not the tail. Yes. Thank you, Lord. The head sees where it's going. Yes. The head sees and smells what it's eating. The tail only knows where it's been. And when it smells, not so good. <laughs> 
Do you want to be the head or the tail? God said, I want you to be the head. He says, I want you to be on top and never on the bottom. Amen. And he says, and if you obey my commandments, I'll make it happen. Because when you obey his commandments, you display his goodness to the world. And when you display his goodness to the world, he displays his goodness to you. So you can display his goodness to the world again. Amen. The word of God says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. In other words, he's, if you're a giver, he'll give you more to give. Some people complain about how they've got so little. That's because they never gave away anything. Maybe they tried it once or twice. Well, I tried that giving stuff. It didn't work. I told you before, when you make up your mind that you're going to do something, the devil makes up his mind and he's going to stop you. He'll do what he can to distract you. He'll do what he can to discourage you. So you'll quit. Jesus said, I don't want you to quit. The apostle Paul said in the book of Acts, he was talking to people. He says, I want you to remember something. The words of the Lord Jesus himself. He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And Jesus also said, for it is in giving that you do receive. Every time you give, every time you give. You see, we need to stop giving, the, giving our offerings and our tithes. We need to start to come up and put them in the basket or to put them in the basket as they come by and receive our blessings. <laughs> It's a mindset. It's a change of thinking. Lord, I'm not sacrificing anything because you're going to supply all my needs. So where's the sacrifice? It's, it's a mindset. Oh, I, I, I can't give. They asked for $10 more. I, I can't give that $10. Why? I, I just can't afford it. You have a poverty mindset. You haven't learned how to seek the kingdom. Because when you start to seek the kingdom regularly, steadily, your mind will change. And you'll stop thinking, I don't have enough, I won't have enough. And you'll start thinking of an abundant life, saying, I'm seeking the kingdom, God's going to supply all my needs. I'm not going to worry. I keep telling the story, I love it, I love the story. Brother Shambach, Reverend Shambach was an evangelist years and years ago passed away a few years back. And he tells the story of when he was a teenager. Now, he, he, was, he, he and his brothers, and he had a lot of brothers, they went to church with, with his mom all the time. They all grew up in church. And one time, things were so bad in the household, this is before World War II, this is about 1940. And things were so bad, there was no food in the house. So they just went out that afternoon, they figured, let's just stay out and hang out. We'll play. So dinner time came, and here comes Mom Shamrock, and she comes and yells out the door, Come on, boys, it's time to eat. And they're like, Ain't no food in the house. But they knew better than to disobey their mother. So they came in, and she says, All right, wash your hands and sit down. We're going to say grace. And they're looking at each other. She's cracked. She's gone. Ain't no food in the house. They washed their hands, they sat down, she led them in grace. Lord, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive through thy bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And they all said, Amen. And there was a knock at the door. And a neighbor was there. And she said, Open the door. They opened up the door. The lady was there with all sorts of pots and pans and stuff with food in. She said, Sister Shamrock, we cooked up and we cooked up so much. We got so much we can't even eat it all. We just thought maybe you and the boys would like this tonight. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And she looked at the boys, which we are about to receive. Amen. Faith. Amen. It's a mindset. God will supply. You don't have to go begging. God will supply. Say this with me. God wants me above all things in life to grow spiritually. And if I do, then I will prosper and be in health. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a mindset. Prosperity is not about getting things that you want. Prosperity is not about having a lot of money. There are people who have a lot of money and, they're, and they just have a poverty spirit. They're not prosperous at all. Absolutely. 
Prosperity is not about those things. It's all about motives. The Apostle James is talking in chapter 4, and he says to them, he says, you're not getting what you ask for. He says, when you ask, you, you don't have it because you haven't asked for it. And when you do ask for it, you don't get it anyway. Well, that's a losing situation. I don't have it because I don't ask for it. And when I ask for it, I don't get it anyway. Why? He said, because your motives are all wrong. You just want it for yourself. Do you want prosperity? Then ask God to prosper you as you're growing spiritually so you can be a blessing to others who don't have as much. And it says in the book of Acts that they didn't consider what they owned to be theirs. And so those who had extra property and those who had land sold some of it and they brought that money and laid it at the apostles' feet so the apostle could get a new car, a Rolls Royce, could buy a new plane. God forbid they sit first class. Heaven forbid they ever go coach. And witness to the person next to them in the seat. Oh, they got to have their own plane. No. Woe to you, rich. You've had yours. You will weep and howl. Many preachers are going to go, but Lord, I flew to Africa, India, Asia. I preached your word. Jesus says, I never knew you. I never knew you. You were a stench in my nostrils. But I cast out devils in your name. Yeah, there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Motives. What's our motives? Our motives have to be to seek the kingdom of God. To have a Christ-centered community of believers. As I mentioned, if you go downstairs and pick up a DVD, a CD, or a teaching thing, or whatever, and you give a dollar, and it'll go into our benevolence fund, it'll be there so we can bless others in the church who don't have something now. So that they never have to worry that they're going to have to beg for something somewhere. But that they know that this is a Christ-centered community of believers who care for each other. Amen? We need that. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 13. We need a vision. We need a vision for prosperity. We need to understand it, and we need to make a vision clear so that we can run with it. And the first part of our vision has to be Deuteronomy 28, 13. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. God wants you to prosper so he can display his goodness to others through you. You're important to God. Turn around and tell somebody, you're important to God. You're an ambassador. No country wants their ambassadors walking around with holes in their shoes. No country wants their ambassadors walking around with shoddy clothing. Every country wants their ambassadors to be dressed well and to present everything well so that they will look at their country and appreciate that country. You are an ambassador for Christ, the Bible says. So God wants you to prosper so that you present the kingdom of God in a good way. Amen. I remember back a while ago when I was doing something that some people do still. Some are still caught up with it. And I witnessed to somebody. Hey, you know what? Praise God. You ought to accept Jesus as your Savior. You see, Jesus gives you more power over everything. He gives you power over everything in your life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus just loves you so much. He wants to set you free from every problem you have. And one day I went to church, and the preacher preached the message. And he says, all you out there talking about how you got power, and God's got power, he said that his cigarette has got more power than you. And I was like, uh-oh, that's me. And I began to struggle, how can I quit? And I tried quitting. So I switched from Lucky's to Salem's, which I hated. Smoked a couple of packs of them. Bought them by the car. You're going to... Buy something, buy a lot of it so you get it cheaper. Hello? 
You know who I was back then? Mr. Cheap. <laughs> so I had a carton, so I'm like, now I'm stuck with these cigarettes. I don't like them. So I broke the filters off and smoked them backwards. Oh, I said, that didn't work. Switching brands didn't work. I'll have to smoke less. So I'd smoke less and less, and then later on I'd chain smoke. I got to the point I'd smoke, I'd light one up and say, I'm not smoking no more. I'd throw out the window of the car. Then I go a block and I turn around and go back and get it. <laughs> I was bound. But God set me free. You know when He set me free? When I put it into a kingdom perspective. I said, Lord, I cannot represent your kingdom properly if I'm addicted to cigarettes. How can I tell people you are more powerful than anything when I'm chain smoking and I'm addicted to this? And that works for alcohol, that works for drugs, that works for pills, that works for food, that works for chocolate, that works for snacks, it works for ice cream. <laughs> Wife yesterday, I'm not buying any more ice cream until next year. She said, next year's going to be here real quick. I said, well, at least I'm not going to do it until next year. But when I got the kingdom perspective and I said, Lord, if I'm an ambassador for Christ, tell somebody, I'm an ambassador for Christ. I am an ambassador for Christ. I represent the kingdom. I said, how can I represent the kingdom if I'm smoking, if I'm a chain smoker, if I'm addicted? I cannot represent you properly. They'll look at me and they will then look at you in the wrong way. You see, I started seeking the kingdom, not me. Oh, what? I got to quit smoking because it's too much money. I got to quit smoking because I'll get lung cancer. No, I got to quit smoking because I'm not representing you properly. Amen. My soul began to prosper and God made my health get better. I was able to quit smoking. Amen. You know how God did it? My uncle was over the house. He walked in my room early in the morning. He said, hey, Frankie, you got a cigarette? I said, yeah, there's uh, cigarettes on my, on my dresser. And he took the last cigarette I had. I had one cigarette left in that pack. And when I got up after I groggily wiped my eyes, I said, you know, I didn't say anything nice. Like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I said a few, you know, exclamation point X, you know, a couple of expletives. I said, he took my last cigarette. And the Holy Ghost said, now you never have to smoke again. <laughs> and I was sitting there dumbfounded like, I never have to smoke again? He said, yeah, if you never ask for another cigarette, you will never smoke again. Because if you go to the store, you have to ask for them. If you want to get one from somebody, you have to ask for them. And he said, you never have to smoke again. You took your last one, you're free. And I was like, praise God, I'm free. Amen. God will set you free in ways you didn't expect. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8. But you shall remember. Thank you, Lord. We'll remember. <laughs> you shall remember it is the Lord thy God that gives you the power to get wealth, not yourself. It is not your ingenuity. It is not your good looks. It is not because you were able to sashay in and get a raise. It was the Lord thy God who prospered you. And remember that. Because Moses said to the people, you're going to reach the point where you're going to forget that it's God who gave you everything you have. Yes. And they did. And they got enslaved by the Philistines. And the Am 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 Amalekites. And the Hittites. And the Jebusites. <laughs> and all the ites. <laughs> Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health as thy soul prospers. These four things, these four scriptures, 3 John 2, Deuteronomy 28, 13, Deuteronomy 8, 18, Matthew 6, 33, they make up the vision, the fourfold vision, north, south, east, west. You've got the whole thing covered with these four verses. God wants you to be the head, not the tail. He wants to give you the power to get wealth. He wants you to seek his kingdom first, and he wants you to be spiritual. And as you are, you will prosper. And when you get this in your mind, your mind begins to change. Solomon asked for wisdom. Amen. And he got wealth. Yes. And wisdom. Yeah. He didn't ask for wealth. No. He actually prayed, Lord, just give me enough for myself and some to give away to others. Yeah. And God gave him wisdom. The purpose of wealth is so that you can be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Get that in your head. The purpose of wealth is so you can be a blessing. 
like God. God has everything. And he gives it all away. He doesn't hold back. He's not afraid if he gives it, he won't have enough. Amen? God wants you to be like him. A giver. A philanthropist. Who was it, Lord? John B. Rockefeller? No. Uh, a railroad, railroad magnate. Uh, Coin? Not Coin. One of these, back years and years ago. Think of his name later. He was, the, he was one of the wealthiest men in America. Owned railroads. He saw that things were changing and he invested in railroads and oil. And because he invested in the railroads, he became one of the richest men in America. And he testified one day. He said, I would never be able to tithe a million dollars if I hadn't tithed my first paycheck for 25 cents. In other words, I learned how to give when I had nothing. And because I learned how to give, always, always steadily giving, God prospered me beyond my wildest dreams, and now I tithe millions. Thank you, Lord. Another man, tremendously wealthy, equipment business, farm tractors, things like that. Him and his brother were partners. And they were committed Christians. And they sought the kingdom in their business dealings. They would not do shady deals. They would not cheat. They wouldn't do anything that was wrong. They said, we're going to make it because God gives us the power to get wealth. Amen. Amen. And they sought his kingdom. And they began to, beyond their tithe, they began to have a vision. That instead of giving 10%, they could live on 10%. And as the years went by, they were able to tithe 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, until they finally reached the point where they tithed and gave away 90% of their income, and they lived on the 10% that was left. Amazing. They remembered the Lord God. They knew that if they gave and sought the kingdom first, that he would prosper them. They knew that above all things, God wanted them to grow spiritually. And if they did, he would take care of all the rest. They had that vision. We need to get that vision and get that understanding. The world says it's not about how much money you make. It's all about how much you keep. That's what the world says. You'll see it on TV. You'll see the commercial on TV about the insurance company that says it's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep. That's what the world says. But God said it's not about how much you make. It's about how much you give away. And it's not just how much you give away. It's how much you can give and keep on smiling. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. God loves a cheerful giver. I just want to tell you a few things that Jesus says. Jesus says this. It's not about how much you keep. It's about how much you give to advance and establish my kingdom on the earth. When you put my kingdom first, I will give you everything you need, and I will give you life and that more abundantly than you could ever get by yourself. When it comes time to give, the apostolic perspective, the Jesus perspective, it says, Lord, everything I have is yours. I'm willing to give everything to you. How much should I keep? When there's a love offering being taken, when there's a special offering being taken, that's the, that's the attitude. You get the wallet, say, Lord, it's all yours. I'm willing to give it all. Because I know you'll take care of me. I know if I seek your kingdom, so just tell me what to keep and I'll give the rest. It's not, well, I've got a 20, a 10, two fives, and four singles. Uh, I'll do Christian roulette. Oh, I picked the one. Praise God, I picked the one. Hallelujah. Oh, well, I, I'll be generous. I'll give two. It's not that. It's not playing games. It's just, Lord, it's all yours. I have heard, I've seen people hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times when it comes time to giving, they, for some reason they just give it all. And immediately God begins to bless them. Not because they were looking to get. You see, you've got to stop giving to get. The preachers on TV and the preachers on radio and the preachers you'll hear about all the time, they keep on saying, if you give, you'll get. If you give, you get. Just give a hundred, you'll give it a thousand. God will give you this and God will give you that. You just give and get. You give and get. You give and get. Wrong motive. 
I give so I can demonstrate the kingdom. I give because I'm an ambassador for Christ. I give because I want people to see God's love in my generosity. Because God is generous. After all, he saved me. Amen? Amen. 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 When we get that mindset, we are going to be prosperous beyond everything we can think. God is going to do things for us. We need to see God bring forth the things he wants to do in life. So I just want to ask you a question as I close with this thought. This is for everybody here and for people watching. Do you know any other church leaders who have this perspective on money? Do you personally know them or have you heard them? And sad to say, most of us are going to have to say very few. It should be every preacher. But very few. Is what I'm speaking to you today affecting your mindset? Are you ready to have a change, a shift in the way you think about money, in the way you think about yourself, in the way you think about prosperity? Are you ready for a shift? Are you ready to have that vision? God wants me to prosper. God wants to bless me. He wants to take care of my needs so I can take care of the needs of others. He wants me to seek his kingdom first so then I'll grow spiritually and then I will grow financially and I will be healthy. Is that going to start to be your mindset? I encourage you to seek the kingdom first. And I encourage you to remember that money talks. <laughs> What's it saying to you? What is money saying to you? Let's stand up together. And let's pray. Hallelujah. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May thy kingdom come. May thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, because we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us away from temptation, and deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I bless your people. Lord, I lift my hands up, and I say, may the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord begin to lift you up on high. May the Lord begin to change the way you think. And may the Lord begin to change the way you act. May the things you do glorify God, advance the kingdom, and may you above all things prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Amen. 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 God bless everybody.